Children receive nasogastric tubes, known as NG tubes, to deliver tube feeding formulas, medications, or fluids into their stomachs. A tube can stay in place for a month or longer, but it can also accidentally be removed by the patient more frequently. Some older kids choose to place their tube daily so they can attend school without the tube. My name is Beth Lyman and I am a pediatric nutrition support nurse. On behalf of the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, ASPEN, and the Novel Project, I am honored to provide you with this video. Today I will be showing you how to place a nasogastric feeding tube using best practices. Whatever the reason for the NG tube and whatever the use, safe insertion of the NG tube and proper verification of placements are key aspects of the procedure. As we begin, let's look at where the tube goes once it enters the nose. On this graphic, you can see a side picture of the nose, mouth, throat, esophagus, stomach, and small intestine. The tube enters the nose and with gentle downward guidance, it travels from the pharynx to the esophagus. The key point to keep in mind is the proximity of the trachea to the esophagus as the tube misplacement into the lung can be subtle to detect. Complications such as bronchial perforation and or pneumothorax can occur as a result of accidental pulmonary placement of the NG tube. If feeding begins without proper tube tip verification, patients can be fed into the lungs causing sepsis, respiratory failure, or death. When placing an NG tube, how do we know where that tip ends up? An abdominal x-ray would tell us, but generally, pediatric patients do not automatically get x-rays with each tube placement in order to avoid excess radiation exposure. So we need alternative methods to verify tube tip placement and avoid any complications from tube misplacement. If an x-ray is obtained to verify NG tube placement, it is recommended that the radiology department include a comment that it is okay to use the tube given its placement. Today you will see the steps to NG tube placement and verification. And we will start here at the Children's Mercy Kansas City Simulation Lab and then demonstrate on a real patient. Before we get to the demonstration model, there are always some key points to consider when placing one of these tubes, so let's discuss that. When a baby cries or is breathing very fast, such as during a respiratory viral infection, the epiglottis is open more often than usual, which could allow that tube to slip into the wrong place, the trachea. You might be able to tell this if there is a quick change in the color around the mouth. This bluish tinge is called circumoral cyanosis. You might also see a rapid change in the child that is otherwise unexplained. Pull the tube out and let everyone take a break, including yourself. It's also possible that you would see no signs that alert you to misplacement, which is why we must use evidence-based approaches to verify placement. Now here is a tip that you can use that has helped me many times like this. Blow in the child's face forcefully. This causes a startle reflex that makes the child swallow. Make sure you time the blowing with the advancement of the tube, but this will work. If the child is just vomited, wait some time before replacing the tube or you run the risk of needing to just replace it again immediately. If the child seems more settled after 20 to 30 minutes, try then. If more than an hour goes by and you still do not think that child can tolerate having the tube replaced, call the health care provider for guidance. Remember, the smaller the child or baby, the less time you want that child to go without feedings. The first step of the process is to gather your supplies and select the correct size tube for the size of the child. A general rule is to use the smallest bore tube to get the job done. Here are some examples of NG tubes. As you can see from these tubes, one has a stylet or guide wire, while the others do not. Your institution will have selected the best types of tubes for your patient population. It is not the purpose of this video to endorse any particular brand or type of NG tube product. Now, it's time to gather the rest of the supplies.
The first item you will need is water-soluble lubricant or sterile water. I prefer water as the lubricant can burn the nasal passage. In a hospital setting, sterile water is preferred. A non-toxic permanent marker. If there are number marks on the tube, you can use that instead of a marker, but make sure you tape the tube in such a way that you can see the number. A skin protectant. Discuss which product your team uses. We use an apple pectin thin wafer cut to the size of the cheek. Tape, hypoallergenic. Some nurses cut cute shapes and decorate these products before they use them. Commercial versions of this are available for purchase. A 3, 5, or 10 mil NFIT syringe. This is a specific type of connection used on syringes, feeding tubes, and feeding bags that is a new safety standard for tube feeding equipment. Your institution may or may not have converted to NFIT yet. pH paper or strip or any other product that allows for checking pH. Some sort of blanket to swaddle the smaller children or babies. The first thing we always do is wash hands or use hand sanitizer, then don clean gloves. Select which side of the nose you will insert the tube and to protect the skin, wipe the cheek with a non-sting skin protectant if available. Allow this to dry and apply the thin apple pectin wafer to the cheek and gently press in place. It is important to make sure that the tube is in the proper place in the stomach. To do that, measure how much tube will be placed inside the child by placing the tip of the tube at the nose, then to the bottom of the ear. Locate the bottom of the xiphoid process and the umbilicus. The tube should be laid out to a spot halfway between the xiphoid and the umbilicus. This should be how far the tube will go. Mark the tube at that point with a marker and that spot is where you will insert the tube up to or make a mental note of the number which is a centimeter mark and go to that number. Some tubes have a longer tip because they have weights. When you measure, be sure to put the first hole where the formula comes out at the nose and not the tip of the tube. Measure each time you put the tube in. Position the child with his or her head up. For infants, you will need to swaddle the baby and have someone hold the head and body to help with insertion. A pacifier will help the infant swallow while the tube is going down. For a toddler, hold them in your lap, securing the head, body, and legs while someone else inserts the tube. For an older child, have them sit up and sip water through a straw to help with swallowing. A key point to remember here is to keep the head straight and not allow it to tilt back, which opens the pharynx to the lungs. Lubricate the tip of the tube with water or water-soluble lubricant. Once the child is secure, put the tip of the tube in the nostril, angle it toward the center of the nose. Gently push the tube down the nostril until you reach the mark on the tube that you made when you measured how long the tube should be in the correct spot in the stomach. If you feel a blockage, Pull back a little bit and try again to reinsert the tube. The child might cry or gag, but if they cough, choke, or have trouble breathing, pull the tube back. Retry once the child's calmed down a bit. This is also where you will want to blow in the face of a child or smaller baby to get that startle reflex and swallow. <sighs> Remove the guide wire, if one was used, and attempt to aspirate fluid from the NG tube for pH measurement. 
aspiration of gastric contents will allow the guide wire to be removed more easily. Tape the tube to the cheek and as close to the nose as possible. The tube should not press on the nair, the opening to the nose, or it might cause a pressure ulcer. Make sure you can see the mark or the number so that you can tell if the tube has moved or not. If the patient is apt to go home with an NG tube, have the caregiver help you secure the tube as this skill takes some practice. If the tube hanging outside the nose is long, wrap the extra length of tubing in a large circle and tape it to the back of the shirt or tuck it into clothes to keep it from being pulled out. Now that the tube is in, I will demonstrate the appropriate way to check the position of the tube tip. It is important not to use auscultation or examination of gastric fluid as the sole measures of tube tip verification. Both of these methods are unreliable. The ink mark on the tube that was placed to measure the length of the tube to be inserted should always be seen at the nose. That mark should be the same every time and should be documented in the medical record. If the mark is not at the nose, you should remove the tube and follow the steps of inserting the tube again. Attach an end fit syringe of an appropriate size to the end of the NG tube and pull back gently on the plunger of the syringe to check and check pH using the fluid obtained. As you will recall, pH measurement represents the level of acidity of stomach fluid. The lower the number, the more acid is present, and it is a good indication that the tube tip is in the stomach. When you pull out the fluid from the tube, put some of the fluid on a small piece of pH paper. Match it to the grid on the product and note that number. The stomach fluid should be at a pH level of 5.5 or less. Some institutions use a cutoff of 5.5 and others use 5. Never round up and accept a pH of 6 as a cutoff for proper NG tube placement as pulmonary secretions are often this pH. If your patient is on antacids or medications that decrease stomach acid, the gastric pH could be higher, so checking pH may not tell you if the tube is in the stomach. Check with the healthcare team for guidance. If you have rinsed water in the tube, it can change the pH, so withdraw two to three mils and discard that prior to checking pH. It may not be necessary to flush the tube at all with water. Check the manufacturer recommendations for the product you use. The process we recommend for NG tube placement verification is pH, as it is the best evidence-based approach. Sometimes you may not be able to aspirate back stomach fluid. This may be because the stomach is empty or the tube is in a fold in the stomach. In this case, you can give a three mil flush of air and watch for breathing problems. Coughing, choking, or turning blue when flushing with air are signs that the tube needs to be removed. If you still cannot get any fluid back after aspirating, reposition the child on the left side for 10 to 15 minutes. If you still don't get any stomach contents back and you didn't see any breathing problem with the air flush, remove the tube and replace it as it could have been coiled in the esophagus. Once the tube tip is confirmed by pH, you may want to flush the tube with a small amount of water, two to three mils. In fluid restricted patients, however, this step can be skipped. Now that I've demonstrated on a model, I will show you this process on a real child. Okay, let's get some hand sanitizer on. You ready for a new tube? Shall we do a new tube? Okay. Okay. Let's go right here. Let's press 
puts that in place so it can get nice and well secured. Oh good, that's a great job of it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now let's measure and see how long we're going to put the tube in. Okay. Just get my hand. It's okay. You're suspicious, aren't you? Gotta put your feet down so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Oops. Oops. Okay. Mama, can you hold his hand for me? There we go. To the breastbone. Where's your belly button? Okay. All right. Oh my goodness sakes. You're gonna be sick now, aren't you? Okay, Mama, can you hold his hands with me? Stay right there. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. It's Tube placement in an older child can present challenges. What you see in this clip is a realistic scenario of a very nice boy who agreed to have the NG tube placed, but once the procedure began, he changed his mind. You see him kicking, crying, and even coughing during the attempt to place the tube. He was being treated for pneumonia, so the cough was expected but not helpful. I was also unable to cannulate the nair he initially indicated he wanted the tube placed in, so I had to go to the other side, likely due to edema of the nasal passage. Here you can see I could not aspirate gastric contents after two attempts. We were able to tape the tube in place and turn this young man on his left side to allow for pooling of secretions. After a few minutes, I was able to aspirate acidic gastric contents. When you encounter situations in NG2 placement that are not textbook perfect, stay calm and keep talking to your patient to reassure him or her. The clips we have just shown you are not unusual in pediatric NG2 placement. NG tube use in the pediatric population is very common, but we should never take for granted that it is not without risk. Using techniques demonstrated in this video lowers the risk of tube misplacement and inaccurate tube tip verification. I've placed hundreds of these tubes using the methods I've shown you today. It's important for you to pay attention to the patient's reactions, stay calm, and follow the techniques you've been shown.